one of my first jobs that I made millions from, immediately I was paid. I started getting ready to go to the US for the world's largest conference. I said, you know what? I done my research. I said, I must go for this conference. If I want to be international, I have to move. Let me, I have to move and go and meet them myself. I have to yeah. invest. Yeah. Nobody was there when I was talking my diary. Nobody was there. Hmm. But today, it's all paying off. You have to prioritize excellence. You cannot say that you want to take this to another level, right? And you're not willing to invest in yourself. You're joking. Hi, and welcome to the Everything Voice of Us podcast. I'm T Code, an African voice of a talent from Nigeria. And this is my podcast, where I take on voice of a topics from an African perspective. On this episode, I interview Nigerian voice of our artist, coach, innovative leader, and founder of the Voice of Our Academy, Sheon Shubo popularly called the brand master. Having spent almost two decades, he shares an inspiring story of how he discovered his voice and attained global relevance in voiceovers. Sit back and enjoy this episode. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Everything Voice of Us podcast. It's me again, your host, T Code. And as you know on the show, I bring on people who are excelling in the voice of us space in Africa to share their experiences and help us know how we can, you know, chat our course as voice talent. Now, today I have with me an incredibly gifted individual as my guest is a premium voice of a talent from Nigeria, an inspirational, motivational speaker, is also the founder of of the voice of our academy, our academy, the voice over voice bank, over and the voice over drill. Over drill. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you one of Nigeria's finest voice artists, Sheon Shubo. Mr. Shubo, it's a pleasure to host you on the podcast today. How are you doing? How are you doing? Thank you to Lou Lokwe. I'm fine. I'm doing well. Um, I'm glad to be here as well to contribute my quota um, to your podcast and, of course, to the African narrative. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be here as well. Thank you for inviting me or thank you for having me like people say <laughs> yeah fantastic um i've been longing to have you on this for a while uh just waiting for the right time but anyways uh this is the right time i guess so so something i something I, yeah something i like to do on the podcast cast on every episode is for every of my guests because we are africans our names are indigenous they have meanings and the meanings are attached to the right pronunciations of the names um so so your name can be pronounced in different ways but it's better for us to set the record straight so that other um non-indigenous listeners can understand how it's been uh, being pronounced now and what it means so so i know it to be pronounced as Ulua shubo and I don't know if I am exactly correct. Correct. Well, not exactly. Oluwa Sheon Shubo. Shubo. The, uh, what's it called? The full name is Shubo Main. Right. Mm. So, Oluwa Sheon Shubo Main. Right. Yeah. That's so, what does it mean? So, what does it mean? Well, Oluwa um, Sheon means thank God, you know, um, give, give God thanks. Right. Uh, oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. However you want to put it. Um, Shubomain means, uh, so it's a, uh, the, there's an African, what's he called? Deity called, uh, Ushubo Mile. Ushu, Ushu, that is it. They say Ushu, mm. That's what it called. Yeah. But there's no Ushu. <laughs> <laughs> He's only called that. <laughs> so that's what it means. Shubomain. Right. Um, so god protects mm. me yeah uh, thank you god simple that's how i say it. now it, yeah i mean me, if, if i didn't ask you know i would probably even i would have been wrong all this while pronouncing your name wrongly even though i'm yoruba <laughs> well, I, mean, I understand because it's always shubo is also my nickname a lot of people call me shubo in fact a lot of people don't know my name is my first name is Sean. even i mm. as you call me Sean, i'll I would probably not last you forget. You forget. Yeah. If you yeah. call me Shubo, uh, I'll look, I can look back. If you call me Shio, I might not look back the first time. But mm -hmm. if somebody now says Shion Shubo, uh, I can not look back. But if you mm -hmm. call me Shubo, it's a no no. It's a it's a it's a no brainer. I would I would always mm. Yeah. Because yeah. so it's Olua Shion Shubo. Great. Exactly. Great. Exactly. Great. And then, and then um, you also are addressed as the brand master. Master. Mm -hmm. How did this come to be and why did you choose that name? Well, the brand name was actually given to me by two clients. 
you know mm. um, i used to run a brand, brand consulting firm right it's actually still active but uh i just put put it on a low uh, low key now um but i used to i used to actively run a brand consulting agency and it was called id universal projects i uh so i, I used to i was i was i mean till now I, for my clients, it's always ideas, right? It's always ideas. For me, I always brainstorming on ideas on how to, for how my clients must grow or how they can grow, right? Um, and one of my clients, in fact, these two clients that gave me the name, did not they never met each other before, all right? Mm. One of them just said, you know, there was an idea that I pitched to them for their brand, and the guy just said, I don't know what to give you, but you are the brand master like you just you just you mastered this thing the other guy too said you know what same thing was pitching an idea you know and then he just says and i just have to have to give you a name you know you are the brand master both of them never met you wow uh, so i just i said oh then this, this is a name already it's already it's already brand name. Mm. <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah um that's how people then i mean they when they, they when i go to the offices they call me the brand master the brand master i just adopted it and i said that, you know a lot of people started calling me the brand master so some people just go brand master brand master brand master. and i mean the name has i can't even leave the name right now why because even when i'm talking to anybody we're talking about the ideas or something i try to put some spice in it they're just like ah no i see why they call you the brand master you know so mm. it's already part of me now that that's a very fancy name i must say i imagine being called um the the voice of a master <laughs> yeah it's okay. it's a whole lot, a lot. yeah so yeah uh, let's talk about let's talk about growing up, growing up in lagos um uh, i see you've been in lagos been predominantly been most of your life and yeah. how um, was was your childhood experience like before you started doing voiceovers because that has a lot to in, in terms of how you were influenced early enough into voiceovers voiceovers well um i actually grew up in uh in Surulere. i started my life there um but one of the things i used to do and i remember clearly which was some of the things i teach at the academy was when i started I used to, there was this, uh, the, the cassette recorder. I would put it in the, um, the stereo and then press record my cousin, you know, and we'll host shows or we'll redo ads, right? We do ads as that's far back as when I was five years old, five, six, seven, you know, wow. We'll, we'll do ads. We'll do, we'll be interviewing ourselves. We'll be doing, um, accent impressions. You know, we never knew we were just. I mean, for us, mm. it was just a joke, right? Um, so it was very, it was very spontaneous, very, very spontaneous. And we used to enjoy it. And I, I'd always been an art guy all my life, you know, mm. draw, I design, I paint, right? Um, I dance, I sing, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. there's really, there's really nothing arts around the art that I'm not inclined to, right? So. Um, growing up for me it was very artistic. It was very artistic. Even though my mother always thought, this boy, you're just too, you are just, why can't you just do sciences? <laughs> 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 you know, but um, it, it's always been in me. When I was, as far back as when I was two years old, they used to call me MG, like Michael Jackson. Wow. Wow. When, whenever they, whenever they, um, they carried me or when there's a name they, there's a there's a song they used they formed for me they used to call me achichu achichu bam bam achichu so anytime you say achichu bam bam i'm always stepping i'll be dancing so wow any small thing dance dance so they'll call me they used to call me mg when i was younger you know so for me it's always it's always been a a story of art you know growing up for me it's always been a story of art um while while in secondary school I was in various story reading clubs, story books, story book clubs. I used to sing. I was in the, uh, what's it called? The Brigade, you know, when we were doing the March past, I used to play the drums. Mm. Um, in my art, in my, in pr primary school, I won an art competition for my primary school. Uh, that was when I was wow. primary five. It was something that had to do with pollution. I remember I drew a beach and I drew um, an island, a beach, and then, 
we had uh, different sprinkles of papers that were, you know, it was so it's been an, a journey of art for me all my life. Uh, mm. But for when, as I got, as I got older, you know, I just began to you know just segment them or compartmentalize them, and when my voice came uh, into light, light in terms of when I came into consciousness of my voice, it was actually mm. what people always told me. When, every time I go somewhere, I, wow, your voice is wow, wow, your voice is man, you know. Um, but I just always felt like, yeah, it's, it's okay. I heard that a lot, right? Uh, I never took it seriously. Um, but uh, every time, so even though I had so many things that I could do, right? And I was, some of them, I started making money with them very early in life, right? Mm. But every time that I used my voice, that was what paid me the most. Hmm. It was, it was always anytime you have to do with my voice, I I always got the largest chunk of money, right? Um, every other art form that I did, yeah, it paid me, you know, it made some money for me. But when it came to my voice, it always paid me the most. So I knew that my wealth had to do with my voice. I just knew it, hmm. you know, and of course, God inspired that as well. You know, but I always knew that he, I, he was just, he was a no brainer. Immediately, I started seeing the signs. It was a pattern, right? So, yeah. I took me to yeah. Asso Rock. You know, my first time in Abuja, I was in Asso Rock, right? Wow. My voice has taken me to different places all over the world, right? Places I naturally, um, I would just have been there. Right. Um, so for and me, and is it as a voice actor or as a singer? Because I know you sing as well. So, you sing as well. Um, some yeah. So for example, when I was in when I was in Asso Rock, I was on the as part of the voice for. Even though I did a voiceover for that project as well, I was part of the voices, the voice, the singers for the Centenary project. So we had mm. Martins. Um, it's on YouTube. Tusi Martins, Zakiadze, Iben, um, Judy, Ayo, Ayola. Um, who else was there? Uh, uh, Zaki Adze, you know, it was uh, the Nigerian centenary song. Um, so I was, I was on it. I was one of the artists on it. And Oyeka went, yes, she was a uh, captain of that project. So she said, wow. well, you have to be on this song, you know, because I have, I have a duet with Oyeka when actually as well. Wow. So when wow. I did that, when I had that duet with her, she was, I mean, the studio session was a mess because, I mean, it was a gospel song, so it was a mess because we, I mean, she just, everybody just. <laughs> Talent was overdosed. <laughs> and and for context, um, people. people mm. So she, after that, she just took a liking to me and she said, you know what, um, I'm on this centenary project and you must be there. Like, she didn't give me an option to choose. She just said, you must be there. And you're going to be there. There's, there's no way. You just have to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I got called to record, you know, um, recorded the song. And then we were called, <clears throat> President Jonathan then, we were called to come present the song um, at Asso Rock. Um, and that was my first ever time in Abuja. I think that was 2010 or so. And it was it was amazing. It was amazing. Wow. Wow. Um, so, yeah. That's, that's it. To, to put a bit of context into this for those who don't know who those names are, these are these music heavyweights in Nigeria. And not just people who can sing, but this ones they can sing, sing like they're like top vocalists. So I just had to put that on record. Onye Kawenu, Iben, um, all of those names you've mentioned. So that's some big feats at that time. Um, but let's talk about voiceovers. How did you get into voiceovers? Voiceovers. Well, um, like I said, I grew up doing all those things that were very uh, connected to voiceovers. However, when I was uh, I was eighteen, by that no, seventeen, about seventeen, I was in my year two, and then my friend, my very good friend, Windanari, um, he actually invited me for uh, so there, there was this talent audition. Um, then when we were in Unilag and they were um, picking jingles, they wanted to do, they wanted to pick talent for jingles, right? 
Um, so he called me and said, you know, he, they had already picked him. And he just said, you know what, Shobo, you should come. You know, you can at least do this thing now. So ah, join us. You know, so I came. I followed them. I said, okay, no problem. Let's let's go. Um, so they auditioned me. Auditioned, I sang, you know. So they picked me. And the next day, they called me for a job. The next hmm. day, they called me for a job for Airtel. It was it was uh, V-Mobile then, V-Mobile. So we hmm. went, sat down there. And as I was talking, the guy who owned the talent um, agency was just like, what? He just said, you want to sing? I said, well, yeah. He said, he said no, 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 no. He said, you can't just be singing. You must be doing voiceovers too because your voice is... Your voice is powerful. I said, ah. I said, I hear that a lot. And I heard about voiceovers. Like I even read about voiceovers, but I wasn't just, I didn't know just how to go about it. So he said, don't worry, don't worry. I will school you, uh, you know. And this guy was one of the major copywriters then. You know, he's the founder of our Orange Academy today. Uh, hmm. Kenny Bradman. Um, Kenny, he calls himself Kenny Bradmus. Brand news, but his name is Kenny Bradmus. Anyways, um, he then called me and told me to start doing voiceovers. He took, took me to the booth, told me to start doing stuff. I was doing stuff, and you know, for me, it just came naturally. It just came naturally, and he was like, "This guy, this guy, you know, your voice is cool." He just kept going on and on and on and on. Huh. And then he we, we created a demo that day, and he started taking it to advertising agencies. And that's how he started calling me for work. Um, um, that was. That was about 20, 21 years ago, you know? Huh. Um, and then that's how we started. The journey started, started doing, for, doing work for a lot of brands until my hit my hits work came out, which was the Skybank work. Yeah, um, yeah. That was 2003. Seven, 2007. Oh, no, 2003, oh. actually. Oh, wow. Wow. Three, yeah. That's a long time. A long time. Yes. And that was when I really got an interest into voiceovers. Because um, now that particular deal, everybody will tell you they know that ad. Everybody talks about it. It was all over the world in terms of CNN. It was where everywhere, BBC, everywhere, you know. But now the remuneration, in terms of for me, hmm. was not, you know, it wasn't it didn't make sense. Right. Yeah. And everybody was talking yeah. about me. Hey, Shubo, ah, oh more, you know, hammer. Hey, bad guy. Mm. You know? Um, but the truth was, I was not hammering, right? Um, so I went to do my research. I, that was when I went into I so when people tell me, Shubo, how come you're so vast about business of voiceovers? It's because I don't talk when I talk about business of voiceovers, I don't talk from an angle of what I read in a book. <clears throat> I talk from an mm. experiential level. Because I know mm. what I'm talking about, right? Um so these are things that have happened to me. So these are business, that's case studies, as in real life case studies. This is not a, a what you read in any book, real life, mm. right? Um, so for, for that, I mean, I went deep into the research of the business of how to, you know, in fact, I didn't even just go into business of voice, but I went into the business of creativity, right? Um, because I found out that a lot of creative people who don't know how to, make money. They don't even know how to make money from their gifts, right? Some of them are not even cut out for it, which is fine, right? But in that case, you must also know how to network with people that know the business so that you're yeah. able yeah. to not just fall by the wayside. So yeah, mm -hmm. um, that's, 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 that's the, I just had to summarize the story for you. It's longer than that. But <laughs> I just had to summarize it for you. It's a very, very, um, very interesting and inspiring story also. Um, one more thing I'd like you to touch on before we move on or move away from the story is you're talking the era of 2003 to 2010. You were doing a lot of jobs then. But, but, what was the voiceover um, landscape like in Nigeria at the time? You know, as a young person was just doing voiceovers, compared to what we have now, I mean, give us a, a mental picture of it. There's, there's, there's a lot of improvement now. I mean, with the likes of uh, voiceover, it's it's a lot of improvement um, because we're shedding the light and saying, you know what, mm. look at it. Um, 
Then there was no body that there was no who would train you where, how. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, everybody was just even till now. That's what what when I was going to start with my academy. Do you know how many people fought me? Huh. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of people were like, "Well, how can you take some some things that would you you learned and you want to share it with people? Share it with the world." Yeah, you 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 have to. For me, you don't. When it comes to building an industry, you don't you don't hold information. You, you yeah. give it up. Yeah. You know, let people learn, right? Mm. So, um, for me. When I started, it was there was nobody that was going to teach you, right? You learn by experience. You watch, you know. I I can't count the number of studios I slept in. I can't even count, mm. right? There's no studio in this Lagos that didn't know me. There's no, there's none. Is it very tough studio in Yaba that is closed down now? I'm sure it's closed down now. Studio Works, um, uh, heavy metal studio. Me, uh, what's it called? That's where we recorded the Sky Bank one. Um, what's that place called? Midi Cop, Midi Cop in GRE. There is no studio, right, as at then that I did not sleep in. There's no. <laughs> right. So uh, for me, I just felt like this was work. And I was, as, as somebody who um, learned in terms of professionalism, uh, because I'm not just, I, I've worked in offices, right? I've worked with PR firms. You know, I've worked with brand advertising firms. So I understand the, the place of professionalism, you know, your work ethic. When you don't joke mm. at work, no matter what it is, you know, even if, you're, if your job is to be clapping, clapping, right? Clap excellently. Clap with professionalism. Don't just do things anyhow, shabbily, right? The reason why a lot of um, global brands today, are, I mean, I don't want to just start saying that because I know some of those questions are still um mm-hmm. like global brands will come to you and say Chubo, I want to work with you you know some brands actually thought we were registered in the US like like they, they actually thought that we were actually a US based company hmm. a US based academy not because because but because for us it's all about excellence excellence you must hit it professionally right don't don't just do it don't be half baked about it give it your all Right. Um, yeah. so that's, that's, that's always been my, my angle, my perspective to work, mm. not just voiceover, but to work, anything mm. work. And of course, what is work for me? Voiceover. Right. Um, that's what I do. That's where, where I make money. Um, so yeah. Mm, great. You know, um, your profile describes you as a creative, disruptive, transformational, and innovative leader. And we saw all of those things expressed in um, the creation of the Voice of Our Academy, the Voice of a Bank, the Voice of a Drill. But let's start with the Academy. What inspired you to create what is now known is now known as Africa's first ever training hub for Voice of Our Talents? Talents. The Voice of Our Academy. Our Academy. Well, um, like I said, in my time, nobody was training you. Nobody was giving us information. Nobody. Everything that we did was based on, strictly based on a lot of experience, a lot of learning. You watch, you watch, you learn, you make sure that you don't, nothing goes that you don't even learn, that you don't understand, right? Um, a lot of research. For, for, I mean, for someone like me, in those days, Right, which I knew that a lot of voiceover talents were not doing then. When I got a script from an agency, uh, I would go and research the brand. In fact, that's, that was actually what got me into brand consulting. Right, I would go and research a brand, go and find out about the brand. You know, do research about the brand. Okay, why are they doing this? Why is it this campaign? You know, then when I want to deliver, it actually helps because I feel at home with the brand already. I already understand the value that the brand carries, and then. When it's time to deliver, it's just one time, right? Um, I never mm. my producer, producer's time. So for me, I wanted to replicate that and make sure that um, Nigerian talents, because I, I I meet talents every day, every single day. Nigerian talents, African talents, had a place where they, they, could, they could call it base, where they could learn, and where they could be on the global map. Because, mm. you know, for me, of course, in Nigeria, as a name, we had a lot of local champions. We had people that, you know, top guys. Oh, yeah, they were. That's not what I wanted because it doesn't doesn't it doesn't serve us anything, right? I wanted African voices on the global map, where everybody's talking. Africa should also be talking, 
now. Mm. Just, not just oh, in Nigeria, we're just no, 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 no. We're, we're all global citizens, for God's sakes, right? Mm. Our talent was not made for Nigeria. So the talent God gave us was He didn't give us, He didn't say, take this voice and just be using it in Nigeria only. No, you know, it's for the world, right? So as, as much as you conquer your days as well, conquer the world. So for me, um, it was a mission from the beginning. And I was, I was just, I, I just said, you know what? We have to start this. This is, for now, this is what we need to do. You know, we need to start teaching people this thing. We need to start opening the eyes of people. And, you know, for me, it was, it was a deal I had with God. Um, the first class we had, in fact, it was, we started a class. That class was just, uh, was called the master course. The first ever one was called the master course, the voice of a master course. Um, that was in May, 2016. And we did that. We just wanted about 30 people. We got about 40 people, right? Wow. Um, 10 minutes after we put out that the first flyer, and I'm not joking, 10 minutes after we put out the first, the flyer, the f- flyer for that event, there was an alert, a registration came in, right? Hmm. So that was it. It was a sure, it was a sure sign, sign. you know, that this is going to happen, <laughs> whether we like it or not. So it happened. It happened um, in the Keja at the Bola House. I can never forget. Forty people. We, we, I mean, the place was. People were standing. All right. Mm. That's how bad it was. Um, and then we had the second class at um, Maryland. Anthony, yeah, somewhere in yeah Maryland. Um, that that one too was sold out. So we registered the Voice of a Solutions Group, which had has the trademark brands Voice of a Bank. Voice of Academy, Voice of a Bank, and um, Voice of a Drill. Voice of a Trail. So yeah, that's that's the way. <laughs> your- this, this is quite inspiring. Um, um, so what were the challenges? Of course, running a business in Nigeria is not okay. beans, and there was no template for you in terms of Voice of a um, Academy or you know a learning institution in Nigeria at the time. So how did you? For me, you, you, um, obviously there, there were challenges. But the challenges were not as much. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I had run a business before, actively, before VoiceOver Academy or VoiceOver Solutions. You know, ID mm-hmm. Universal Projects was a brand consulting firm. I was working with clients, right? So I always tell people that ID Universal Projects was my business school. That's when I learned how to run a business, right? That was my mm-hmm. that was my business school, right? Even though I've I've gone to you know, the LBS and the rest of that. But that was my business school. That's where I learned hands-on, right? How to do business. Um, so when I, and because it was also in the business of creativity as well, it wasn't a problem for me. So I was able to put that template on Words of Academy and say, you know what? This is where we want to take it from, right? Um, so for me, um, I would say the wins outweighs the challenges for me. The challenges here, what would I say the challenges? The challenges here are just very simple. You know, the fact that yeah, sometimes you still have to explain to people, right, about the concept of voiceovers or why they need the right voice for their brands, right? There are some people that you have to do that. There are some brands you have to do that explanation for, right? Um, number two, the quacks in the industry. So hmm. somebody is you are trying to raise the bar of an industry and some people are trying to bring it down. So when we are saying that, you know what, this should not be less than this, right? This should not be less than this because you are trying to put that industry at a particular level where everybody can benefit. But somebody is still dragging it down and saying, you know what, don't worry, I will do this thing for 5K, right? <laughs> for 5K. Of course, right? Uh. Nobody's going to take you serious, right? Um, so. Those are the challenges there. But I, like I always say, always differentiate yourself. Always make yourself the standard. Always mm. make yourself the standard. When you make yourself the standard, you know, put your value on yourself. Show that you have some value. People, people, people love value. Mm, Clients love value every time. They love value. So no matter how much people try to bring down the standard, once you show that there is a standard, they will follow you. <laughs> it's not, wow. it's not, you know, it will, they will follow you. Right. And that, that's, that's been our story. And for me, um, 
starting the Voice of Our Academy, my act, one of my major passions was actually, a lot of people think that um, Sheon Shubo has, uh, I, I really don't, I, I like my privacy. I love my life. I like, just love mm. to just be, you know, I want to see a lot of people shine. That's why you have a lot of voiceover talents and uh, content creators from the academy that are they are shining big time globally, right? I mean, I can I can if I count twenty with my hands like this, I won't finish, right? Mm. Doing fantastic things all over the world, right? That's that's actually my joy. That's what I in my my life's mission. That's what I want to see. I want to see impact. That's it for me. I really don't care. I'm just I'm fine. You know. That's once I once I see that. Once I see that, I'm good. I'm good. So mm. those guys that are shining, those those are my those are the those are the, those are my that's my joy. When I see those people shining every single time, when I hear great reports, oh, um, um, Brandmaster, oh, they've signed me here. I'm oh, um, blah 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 blah. I'm the voice of this. Ah, uh, Brandmaster, I'm the voice of this animation. Brandmaster, I'm. Uh, I just got featured on CNN. Brandmaster. Blah, blah, blah. This brand is telling me to come and create content for them. What else do I want? All that I, mm. all that I've worked for. That's that's it. That's what I've worked mm. for, and that's mm. and I'm seeing it come to pass in my lifetime. What else? You know. Mm. So, um, I just love, I love, I love. That's what I. That's that's what I wanted. You know, seeing, and that's what I've always wanted. Seeing um, the, the 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 African talents. On the global map shining you know shining hmm. so yeah that's it for me great um i, I must say I must that's say. um a very impactful uh those are impactful things that you've done i'm talking about impact i remember some years ago i i was trying to figure out rates and i stumbled on the voice of a drill and I think, I think I stand to be corrected, but that was, from my own perspective, the first time that in Nigeria we had a public domain, right? Like a, a website where you could find rates or a rates guide. So, I mean, that was really impactful. And now let's talk about the voiceover drill and the voiceover bank. What was the concept behind this two platforms? And um, have you been able to make impacts with them? Right. So for the Voice of Up Academy, you know, um, because the way these three brands work together, you know, it's like Voltron, right? Mm. They're a combination of each other. Um, so we, because of my experience, I decided to say, you know what? I don't want to work with agencies, right? Let agencies, let agencies that can go, can go and sleep, right? I've, I've been doing branding. I understand brands. I brand managers. I have a lot of brand manager friends. I have a lot of brand managers that I meet at events, right? So, um, I mean, why don't I pitch business to them? Show them that I can do this thing. I show them that I have people that can do this thing. So, um, when we have graduates from the Voice of Our Academy, they are moved to the Voice of Our Bank. They have, they, I mean, the, one of the offers of the Voice of Our academies they do free demos for them right so free demos for everybody that comes right um, um and we always tell them that this is an opportunity to sell yourself because that's that's how we're able to sell you right so when people order for voices we we, we send those voices to them so apparently the f the first um the first uh um template of the Voice of a Bank website was actually more like a pay to, pay to play idea where mm. the voice is there. However, we discovered that Nigerian and African voice uh, uh, brand managers, brand managers, um, people that do projects, don't, when you tell them, go and visit the site and listen to the voices and let us know the voice that you prefer, they don't have that time, right? Mm. They don't have that time because, you know, you keep wondering. Ah, Tell them, you tell them over and over. So we tried that. We tried that a lot of times, but they'll tell you, I don't, you know, can you send me the voices? Right. So we started doing that. Um, so we started sending them the voices and that worked perfectly for them. Um, so that's what we do. We just profile the voices, cast the voices for them. So they say, oh, this is the project. We have 
oh, um, you want, we want epic voices. Epic voices, these epic voices, blah, 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 blah. They have these kind of voices. Um, and then we send them the, epic, the, the, the kind of the epic voices in that because we, the bank is actually, it's a big uh, place where we keep. Mm, a library of voices. Mm. Right. So um, we also have uh, the voice of a drill, which is basically like a gene for voice of a talent. Um, so you mm. have free scripts there. You also have paid subs- subscription based scripts, right? Where people, because we also found out that people go and look for scripts online, but what they find, they go to voices.com, they go to mm. Edge Studio, but what they find are these scripts are not African in nature. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Most of them, you find that, you know, you're talking the way, they, the way these scripts are even written. You find out that yeah. Yeah. even the African talents don't know how to deliver them properly. Like, so we said, yeah. you know what? Let's create something for Africans, right? Let's create something. We have loads of scripts that we've written, right? Let's put them online. Put them, anybody that wants to to, to read them, if you want to, to have access to social, social scripts, you pay some amount of money and then you're able to send your voice in for evaluation, right? And then we evaluate your voice. And then the rates... Um, we just discovered that it was a question that people were always asking. How much do I charge for this? How much do I charge? Come on, let's make mm. this thing. Put it out there, free. Let people have, you know, this is not... Because people want people want to have an idea of a base. So let's give them a base, right, that we feel that they should, you know, charge. Right, so... And then we'd also put some, also some links to help people as well there. So that was mm. when we created the Voice of Audrey. The Voice of Audrey was basically... Um, like a, we created like a gym. It was we actually started around COVID. We started building it around COVID, but we stopped mm. um, because of the whole COVID thing. We didn't know that COVID was coming. One of the reasons why we also built it was to have our recorded courses on the site, so that people people all over the world could take the courses right there, right? Virtually, just mm. um, watch the courses recorded, and then you know take the courses, get certified online there so we started we well, we, i mean we still do that so we have been doing that but um for us we believe that it's still growing for nigeria uh mm. what has actually been selling is the script part of it people are doing the, the people are reading scripts who are sending it for sending in their voice for evaluation and the rest mm. of that um where, there are also some new things that we're building for voice over drill which is coming soon um, mm. we, we won't let the back, uh, the cat out of the back. <laughs> it's all right. So thank you. Course, thank you. One of the things that we did because, of, because we found out that when people take the course, right, they get to a point where, especially the ones that are very busy, they don't practice, right? Mm. So between practice and getting jobs, right? Between, sorry, between taking the course and getting jobs and getting jobs, that lacuna of practicing. So mm. the lacuna of practicing, the voice of what Drew can help you there. Mm, that's a brilliant one. A very brilliant idea. Now, um, um, you've done things locally and then you took it a step higher and you've been on several international platforms. You are a pioneering African member of member of global bodies such as The Voice and Speech Trainers Association USA, The Voice World. World. Uh, the World Voice Organization, WOVO, Wovo. and even you have affiliations with Sovas. So, how did these things come ar- about? Um, did you, you, I mean, just give us a story <laughs> of how it all how it happened. Well, um, honestly, I would say I was just doing my work, really. I was hmm. just doing my work in Nigeria, right? Doing my work actively. Like I told you, whatever I do, I try to put my best forward you're my best foot forward i put my best foot forward and um i'm always i'm very i'm also very business oriented i don't just do things because just because right um i do things because i know that um if you're running a business you have to for example <laughs> i'm sorry to say but a lot of voice of our talents in nigeria i mean if you ask very, a lot of voice of our talents to actually bring out their um the accounts right it's going to be very hard to find that right hmm. audited accounts right um tax 
tax uh, tax history, it's, it's going to be very hard to find that, right? Because some, mm. a lot of a lot of people don't they, they don't see that as oh. But the truth is, how can you say that you want to get a contract of hundred billion, right? Or you want an investor in your business, right? And you don't have history of how you have been making money. <laughs> it's like it's funny. It's just like a joke. <laughs> like mm. you must, you must, you, you must, you must, right? I mean, you can't tell me today of one voice of artist in Nigeria that is worth a hundred million dollars. You can't. You can't tell me one, right? Mm. You can't tell me one voice of a talent in Nigeria right now that has brand value that if anything happens to them, to them right, you can take it to the bank and it will give you money, right? So these are the issues. These are the these are the things that you know we're trying to break and we're saying, you know what, it can happen. It can happen from Africa, right? We're serious minded. So when people see those things, they begin to wonder, you are from Africa and you have all these things. You you are this serious, you know? So, you know, when, you, so when you're talking, when you're talking to them and you're saying, when they're asking questions about certain global best practices and you're saying, yeah, we have that here. Yes, we have that here. You're like, ah, mm. in, even in Nigeria, you have that you 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 do this so um these are the ways for example um the sovas the sovas connect was it was just basically where uh we're putting out content on our page uh, on the voice of our academy page and right they reached out to us you know i mean they were like wow these guys are doing great stuff we reached out to them as well mm. oh thank you blah 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 we uh, came across the voice arts award, saw what they were doing and wow, wow, this is beautiful, right? They thought we went, oh, they, in fact, Rudy will tell you, if you listen to one of his, uh, the live, live one of the live um, interviews he did, he said he thought yeah. we were in yeah. New York, like we were in New York, like when I said, wow. we were in Nigeria. <laughs> Rudy Gaskin, um, Gaskin. Voice arts and speech, you know, I was a member, member of the association and, you know, I was nominated to be on the board. Um, that's how that happened. You know, so for me, it's always been, it's all been a process of, and I always told people, that's my, I said, I'm going, I told a friend of mine four years ago, I said, in five years, I'm going to be on global boards. I, I didn't miss my words. That's what I told him. I said, I'm going to be on mm-hmm. global boards. And, you know, I have, I have, a, I have a vision. I know where I'm going. There's somewhere I'm going, right? Uh, I have, a, there's a vision. There's somewhere I'm going, but a lot of people don't know it. When I get there, they will see it. So, and my friend today always says, Shubo, ah, this guy, ah, right? I told him four years ago, and I remember when I, wow. I told him, I told him we're walking on the road. I said, this is it. This is, this is it. This was, this has going to happen, right? Um, and you, 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 like, I believe in preparation, right? Um, hmm. some of, some of the guys that have come to the academy, some of those guys, I know in the next two, three years, right. With the way they've been trained and with, with the, with the, with the kind of discussions we have from time to time, some of those guys are going to become policymakers, you know, in the, in the creative industry is, go, it's going to happen. Right. Hmm. Right. Today's deep down. I said it right. That's it's because that's how they have been trained. That's mm. how they have been trained. That's that's how, you know, that's how they've been trained. That's the mentality. And one of the things that we 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 prioritize when we teach people is the mentality, your mindset, right? Mm. right? Because as a voiceover talent, your greatest asset is not your is not your voiceover. It's your mind. Mm. It's your mind in preparing as. Even a character is still your mind before your voice, right? So hmm. um, it's it's a. Well, let me start talking to more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, I mean, you're a motivational or you know, let me say inspirational speaker. Anyway, yeah, I just anyway. inspire when I talk. Uh, yeah, you're inspire yeah. inspirational speaker. You inspire people by what you say. Um, um, let's move away from. from just the talent thing now and now like you mentioned policy making 
Right. Let's get your opinion on this, although I saw it online somewhere, but I'd like you to restate it here. Um, lately, we had a ban from Akon on foreign models and voice talents um, in Nigeria. And this ban has caused a lot of reactions here and there. But, but you know, some people are not okay with it. Some people are okay with it. What's your stance on that policy and how you think it's going to affect Nigeria and the international voice over space? Space. So for me, um, I, I always say it. This when the age of collaboration, for God's sake, this is uh. the age of collaboration. This time now is the age of collaboration. And when we are making policies, our policies must also reflect professionalism. It must reflect, it, it must reflect professionalism. It must reflect collaboration. Right now, I believe that when policies are made. Right, they must be clearly thought out. Stakeholders must be clearly carried along. Why? So that you are able to see, feel the pulse of the industry, and know mm. what is important for that point in time. Right now, what is the use of banning um, foreign voiceover talents? Right, you ban foreign voiceover talents. And now we have more voiceover talents in Nigeria doing work. That's that is that has always been the case, by anyway. But you have more Nigerians doing work, but they are still collecting the same fifty thousand naira or forty thousand naira for voiceovers, you know, advertising for voiceovers. When mm. mates all over the world are collecting one fifty thousand, right? Mm. Equi in equivalent of one fifty thousand. Right. Yeah. For yeah. something as little as a thirty second doc, uh, thirty second no, so commercial. commercial, commercial. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what is the use of them banning? Your, you know, so, those local talents are still going to collect that kind of money, right? At the end of the day. And I mean, what's uh, what's importance? What should tackle first of all, in terms of priority, what is most important? Is the remuneration how are these guys paid right all over the world all over the world all over you have people talking about usage fees you have people talking about licensing you have people talking about royalties right these are these are issues right and foreign talents pay to play platforms even pay to play platforms that are like lowest on the cadre in mm. foreign mm. in the foreign in the foreign uh space right they respect those best practices. They respect it. If you go for a conference in the US here, they'll tell you, don't, no, 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 don't follow pay to play platforms. They'll tell you. Mm. They believe that they actually, uh, um, they actually bring down the standard. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, for those pay to play platforms, actually, when you have a Nigerian is collecting four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars from pay to pay platform, when they are paying you fifty thousand naira in Nigeria, come on, hmm. of course it's going to be on the pay to play platform, right? So what are we talking about? We should learn to respect the global best practices, right? Find a way to make sure that the brands enforce these things, enforce. Like I always tell tell my guys at the academy when I'm teaching them, when they ask questions about you know um, license now, I always tell them that's the truth. Very few Nigerian brands are prone to that, that because why? There's no enforcement of laws, right? So for this Arkham ban, as far as I'm concerned, what I feel, I feel yes, it will definitely have a, 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 a place where it's gonna help uh, local talents. However, hmm. it doesn't fully help them because we are still in the same position. We're still in the same position, that same position of hmm. oh remuneration, how do we get paid? You know, how is the industry perceived, right? But at the end of the day, like I said, at the end of the day, this is just the advertising part of it, right? There's still so many genres, right, that this doesn't cover. So hmm. it's okay. Hmm. It's fine. Thank you. For me, <laughs> Thank you for that. I, be, I believe. I believe. Let me just put it simply. I believe there are pros hmm. for this. This policy has pros and cons. But the cons outweigh out because out because we are in the age of collaboration. This is the age uh. of collaboration. People are talking about foreign investors. 
I was talking to um, a friend who is an accountant. She was like, oh, this, this, is, this should be good. And thank God, because I'm well-read, I, I know these things. I said, okay, good. If you feel like this is very good, let me, let me put this to you. You're an accountant, right? Okay. So just imagine that this, this, they had just local accountants, right? Auditing our accounts in Nigeria, right? And then we had the likes of Deloitte, KPMG, PwC, right? Didn't, not do, they should just tell them that they are banned. They shouldn't come here again, right? Those are, they are because they are foreign brands, right? But they are foreign brands that came to Nigeria. So we have PwC Nigeria, you have KPMG Nigeria, you have Deloitte, Akidola Williams Deloitte, right? They have partnered collaboration, right? There is collaboration between those brands, right? And they are able to say, you know what, let's work together. They are even employing people that are not Nigerians. South Africans are mm. working in Akitola Williams and Deloitte. Um, people are working in, uh, what's it called? PwC, K uh, KPMT Nigeria, PwC Nigeria. You have Nigerians, you have more Nigerians working there, or you have South Africans working there, you have Ugandans working there, you have Zambians working there, right? These are foreigners, for God's sake, right? So this is the age of collaboration, and our policies should reflect collaboration. For God's sake, our vice president is in the U.S. now. Try to pitch mm. an idea to to <laughs> to the U.S. You know, we we are in the age of collaboration. You can't you can't ostracize yourself from the world. Do you understand? You know, so that's mm. that's how we should mm. be thinking. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Let, let's talk about home. Um, it seems like we have a lot of unfinished business in the in Nigerian voice driver industry. Right. So, so these challenges we can go on to mention. Um, we can count them on and on and on. But for you, what do you think are the easiest ways to tackle these challenges? I mean, you've had you've had years of experience. You've even gone international with what you do. Well recognized. recognized. How? How? Or uh, what are the strategies from what you have learned with your experience globally? Globally. What are the strategies we need to adopt, need to adopt in our industry in Nigeria? Nigeria. So, and even in Africa, in generally. Africa. Generally. You don't, you don't want to, to get better. To get my, better. You don't want to hear my take on that. Let me make it. Let me make it very mild. Let me make it very mild. Okay. Light. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Two words. Prioritize excellence prioritize mm. excellence right don't do what you know that you cannot buy into you yourself cannot buy into i always tell them at the academy i always tell them if you if you want people to value you what value do you put on yourself what value exactly do you put on yourself so for example i'm saying i'm telling myself oh I want to be recognized internationally for my voiceover. And I'm in Nigeria saying, oh, oh Lord, come down, manifest your power, right? It mm -hmm. just happened like that. No, 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 sir. It doesn't happen that way. Mm -hmm. Right. One of my first jobs where that I got, that I made millions from, Immediately I was paid, right? I started getting ready to go to the US for the world's largest conference. Hmm. Immediately I was paid, right? For the world's largest conference. I said, you know what? I'd done my research. I said, I must go for this conference. If I want to be international, I have to move. Let me, I have to move and go and meet them myself, right? I have to yeah. invest, yeah. right? Nobody was there when I was talking my Gary. Nobody was there, right? Hmm. But today, it's all paying off. It's all paying off. You have to prioritize excellence. You cannot say that you want to take this to another level, right? And you're not willing to invest in yourself. You're joking. That's a, that's a, that's pure joke, right? You, the value that you're willing to get or that you're, you're willing for people to pay for you, you must be willing to invest it in yourself. Hmm. Right. We must be. We must be willing to. So for the industry in Nigeria, honestly, honestly, I will not tell you a lie. I do not see excellence, which is why sometimes people feel like, oh, Shubo, you're trying to. No, I'm not. 
I want I want everybody to succeed. I want everybody to shine, right? But when I don't see excellence, and when I give when I give my two cents and I say, you know what, this is how I feel it should be done, right? Because I've I've mingled with some of the best in the world. I'm I'm, I'm not trying to be prideful, right? Some of the best in the world. Some of them I don't even like to talk about it, right? The kind of relationships I have with have with them, right? But prioritize excellence. You have to, you know, there's some things that I've seen. I'm just like, ah, it's, gonna, it's gonna draw us backwards. Hmm. I'm telling you, backwards, I'm backwards. When you see what people are doing all over the world. When you see, when your eyes, when you see, when you are exposed to it, <laughs> bro, <laughs> mm. when you see what people are doing all over the world, <laughs> you, you begin to, it's not, it's not like, it's not making you feel bad, but it's making you like, it's, it challenges you to say, you know what, we can actually do this. We can even do better, right? Mm. That's why sometimes you have to pay for exposure. Yeah. To pay for exposure. You know, these things are very important. So when I see some things that we when we were still talking about how to uh <laughs> yeah, when I hear something that we some topics that we talk about, I'm like, mm. uh this this should have moved past this so kind of set us backwards, right? Because mm. our mates all over the world. I mean, look, for example, now people are talking about the metaverse. People are talking about NFTs. People are talking about mm. now. In terms of that, right? You know, people have started building studios in the metaverse. People are started mm. building studios. People are already buying real estate there, right? To see how to do voiceover business there. You know, that's the level that people are talking now, right? And then maybe in Nigeria, we're still talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about some very funny things, some very basic things. And you're like, no, bro, you, you can't. You need to move past this, right? We need to move mm. past this. Um, mm. There's so many things. There's so many There's so many things that the industry needs, still needs to work on. Um, but we also need to, we need to swallow our pride, right? Be yeah. humble enough to say, you know what? Um, we don't know this thing. Let's learn from people that know it. Right. Mm. Um, that's the only way the industry can move forward. But I mean, all the training institutions, they have actually brought some light to mm. um, the industry um, because people are beginning to get more aware of voiceover, voice acting. Um, people are people want to be people are interested, you know, in voiceover, voice acting. And then, of course, there's a contemporary industry, like I always say, we can't tell ourselves a, a, a lie that there is no secret. There's no, I, I, I don't call it, I don't want to call it segregation, but there's a difference. There are yeah. veterans yeah. and you have the, um, the new generation or, the, yes, you have the contemporary and you have the contemporary the okay. veterans. So, but you see the contemporary, this is their time. This, mm. this is the time for, this is the time. This is their time. And they have a lot of ideas. The veterans have experience, right? Some of them have ideas. The, the ones that are humble enough, right, are able to collaborate effectively with the contemporary generation. The ones that are not humble enough are going to be a cake. That's the truth. You know, so if you come say, oh, me, I'm a boss, you know, I know everything. I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this for the past 40 years. <laughs> humble yourself. They will, they will, they will humble you. The contemporary mm -hmm. boys will want you, right? So you must be able to want to collaborate and say, you know what? Let me bring my experience to the to the to the ground. Let's let's see how we can work together as a team. And that's how the industry now, of course, moves forward. You know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Now that that's uh, that's beautiful and refreshing to think of. Um, like you said, collaboration is key, and we working together, humbling ourselves. I think. I think that will take the industry forward big time. Um, um, I'd also want to have your so have, suggest. I mean, your opinion about uh, the African podcast and voice of our awards coming soon. Um, what do you think about the awards and you know similar similar 
innovations yeah. uh, across yeah. the continent okay. like that like that i think it's i think it's a welcome development um i think that uh i mean we also need africans to push um the, the narrative right um mm. not just outside us pushing the narrative but africans need to also be part of the people pushing their own narrative so i think the abva um, team is doing that well um it's very important like i said um once you keep prioritizing excellence obviously the world mm-hmm. definitely recognize you for that but um yeah yes i think i think they, they're doing a good job uh, in terms of that um because i, I see that what you're trying to do is actually um uh, push a narrative about africa which is what is important right yeah. um, africa needs that as at this time um as a last year when i went for the voice out award i was when i got there everybody knew i was from africa and <laughs> my bling that but i got there i was intentional i knew that this i'm going to sell nigeria and africa mm. right and it was such a it was so it was so grand that everybody people were going to take pictures of me oh hi oh i love what you're wearing oh yeah, yeah you, you know and i knew that I was there on a mission right um and after the award they called me and they said you know you should um you know you coming here for them was it was a big deal number one number two i think we should start looking at having a nigerian category and i said no you can't just have a nigerian category you must have an african category because africa is not just made up of nigeria you know so mm. just imagine only me going there and they're already thinking about that i just yeah, yeah. more nigerians coming through right now they've created an african category and yeah. that's yeah. Gonna, that's going to open a whole new opportunity for african talents right um so um what abba is doing also it's also going to open um a door right door opportunity for african talents and which is is very important um i know that you know you're starting from a place very soon it will become big you know just keep at it consistency is the name of the game yeah so, yeah thank you very thank much you. Uh, mr shion shogo uh, just before we go for people who don't, don't have any experience and they're willing to come into voiceovers or even young voiceover artists that are just starting you can just drop your two cents one or two advice for them and it, we can take that home take that home um number one number one advice is don't just don't be talent centric right um when you depend on your voice too much right um it might not give you the result you want remember that there is a business of talent right um talent is not just enough there's a business of talent also understand the business behind the talent so that you are able to not just be a talent um not just be a very good talent that is poor right hmm. talent that is commercially viable and you know um has that 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 is that has that has it that you know that is well rewarded for his work his or her work right um so that's one number two um always stay consistent stay consistent right um remember perfection is not the name of the game no perfection is not the goal progress right is the goal perfection is not the goal progress is the goal always know that every step of progress is growth there is growth in every step of, of progress right um and yet it, it, it takes you higher and higher and higher sometimes you fail keep going keep going right um so there's growth in every step of progress um don't just give up don't say you know what if it's not perfect i can't do it so just, just keep going and one day you will be rewarded for all that you do and you know you come to your own 
Mm. Basically. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sherwin Showboy. It's been a pleasure having you here. Almost an hour. And we've, been, we've been talking about voiceovers and we've, we haven't even scratched the surface. But um, for people that want to learn more from the brand master, they know they can find you at the voiceover academy. <laughs> yeah, we have voiceover academy 24 7. Anybody that wants to get me, I'm there. Um, I'm not in Nigeria right now, but obviously, um, mm. I'll be there very soon. Very, very soon. Um, hopefully, um, I'm just here building international structures and, of course, mm. tell my family. Um, so, yeah, uh, Voice of Our Academy is always open to anybody who wants to learn more, see more. You can, you, there are so many people there making things happen, like making things happen big time. So feel free, you know, if you want to learn more, feel free to just go there. Thank you, so Thank you very much, Thank Mr. Shion Um Yeah, it's been a great time ha um, having this episode with you. And hopefully we have to talk, yeah. we'll get to talk another time about the uh, pressing issues in the voice of our space. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So that's it um, from the ba brand master, Shion Shobo. And uh, like I'd always say, keep voicing and keep winning. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe, leave a comment, and tell someone about it. Follow the podcast on everything videos on all social media platforms. Thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.